It's on deck and she's at 390. Coffee had four base hits yesterday, three in one game, one in the other. Norski is staying about a 60 mile an hour range. The outfield straight away, medium depth. One ball, two strikes on Danica Coffee. She has done her job as a leadoff hitter for the Tigers. Second to first for the putout, Jade Moy. Over to Riley Platusik, and let's take a look at the defense. George and Dillon and Bailey are in the pasture. McFadden and Becker on the left side of the infield. Moy and Platusik on the right. Pinarski is pitching. Hamada is catching. It's a nice pitch there inside after everything had gone outside. Gets her jam for an easy ground out. Here's Briggs. She has been sterling in center field defensively and is flirting with a 400 batting average at 390. The bet after Coffee and Briggs, the best batting average is 275. The Tigers have some work to do throughout the rest of the lineup in raising those batting averages. It's been pretty inconsistent, but what they're what they're really looking for is that big hit in the big inning in a prime time situation, an RBI situation. Obviously where they've got to become far more consistent. Stephen F. Austin came from behind to beat Drake in the game preceding this one, a 3-2 final. The Lady Jack scored Two in the bottom of the seventh to win it. Briggs has been getting on base a lot with no base runners ahead of her. With the bases empty, she's batting 476. There's that characteristic left elbow pump. She'll do that two or three or four times in every at bat. There's the little draw in the dirt. Now she'll take her walk. She usually reaches over to stretch. She has the best on base percentage at 490. That is definitely her routine, though. You've got her pick. The 3-2 pitch. Pulled to the right side. Off the glove of the second baseman. That looked like it hit up on the heel of the glove. And Jade Moy was unable to pick it up. That's going to be an error on Jade Moy. And that's what speed does. Moy's worried about Briggs coming down uh, the lane. She's there, she's got the ball, but in her brain's thinking, I've got to make this play quick and screws it up. Here's Taylor Pleasance. She had a triple on a home run in one of the games last night. And in fact, that home run gave LSU a 5-4 lead and a comeback effort. And it's starting to look like Taylor Pleasance. No question has been Somebody else the first two weeks of the season. Preseason all SEC just selected to the USA national team. Base hit. Pleasance goes the other way with it and slaps it with some gusto to left. A runner on her way to third. Safe at third base and Pleasance moves up on the plate of the corner. Briggs is so aggressive on the base pass. I don't, I'm not even sure she looked at Beth Tarina. Pleasance hits it hard. It gets out to the left fielder, George, in a hurry. Oh, yeah. She no checkup at all around she second. She did this all on her own. 
You want to be a great base running team, you have to have great base runners. Spinner bait in action, scoring, or rather moving from first to third on a base hit that got to left field in a hurry. And the Tigers are cooking early. Here's Georgia Clark. That changeup got hung up in the hand of Pinarski. Pinarski has uh, thrown 14 innings and given up 19 hits. Five of Georgia Clark's RBI, she's got 13 on the season, five of them came yesterday. Let's go back and look at Georgia Clark's late game home run. This sent the Tigers home with a 12-4 victory. And the customary stomp on the plate after her home runs. She had a three-run double earlier in that game. That's downstairs. Laura King is calling balls and strikes. Mike Thibodeau is at first base. And Chris Tahanika is the third base umpire. Clark has the green light on the 3-0. The runner scores on the ground out to the shortstop, Becker. Becker thought for a moment that she might have a play at the plate, but then decided to take the sure out. I'm not sure Becker was playing enough in for this. Of course, the ball is it's a slow roller. Yeah, I think she had a play. Would have been close, but I'm thinking you got to try it home. Designated player Shelby Sinceri comes to the plate. LSU has taken a 1-0 lead. Taylor Pleasance is at second base. There's a mitt popper for a strike. We talk about how strong Georgia Clark is, but I'm not too sure that Sunseri isn't the strongest player on the team. Is there a play by the first baseman? There is not. Riley Platusic hustled over, but could not get to it. The outfield is deep and straight away. The wind is blowing from left to right, but not with the same gusto as last night. No. The one-two pitch. It's not comparable to last night's. temperature at all. To the LSU, uh, the, I'm sorry, the SEC flags flying out there. A little bit of a breeze going. The one-two pitch. Bounces in, the count is level. Just trying to keep that change up short in the dirt, hoping that Sunseri will bite and fish for that pitch that's not really a strike. That is in the net behind the plate and the count remains two balls two strikes. 58 degrees right now. Winds out of the northeast at seven and a negligible chance of rain. And much more pleasant right now than it was at this time yesterday in Baton Rouge. Three Flecko. balls, two strikes. Yesterday was 30 degrees colder than it was the day before and today is somewhere in between. <laughs> Stick around, it'll change again tomorrow. 
Here's the 3 2 pitch. Fouled away. Sanceri is making Panarski throw strikes here. 24, 24th pitch of the inning. Pleasant at second base. Clark has an RBI ground out in the inning. It's an unearned run. But the Tigers are on the board in the first. Ooh, she thought she had snuck it in there. Sanceri coaxes a hard-earned walk out of Panarski. And the end continues. Let's see where this screwball is. That's a 50-50 call. That's an excellent could gone, pitch. Could have gone either way. Next up for the Tigers, number 44, catcher Ellie Newland. So Pleasance and Sanceri aboard with Ali Newland at the plate. Newland is hitting 286 this season with runners in scoring position. She's hitting 250 on the season. She's making her 12th start. This is LSU's 14th game. That pitch is right down Main Street. Newland has eight hits. Two of them have been doubled. She also has homered and has driven in seven. That homered was a grand slam. That was last weekend in Florida. Starting to get a nice crowd at the ballpark considering this is Mardi Gras weekend in South Louisiana. And the Tigers are playing baseball at home against Alex uh, in Alex Box Stadium, Skip Burtman Field against Southern today. A lot to do and we'll check in on that score in a moment. A lot to do in this part of the country this weekend. Of course, Mardi Gras is Tuesday, Fat Tuesday. LSU is leading Southern in the bottom of the sixth inning, five to two. That's grounded to the third baseman McFadden, and she steps on the bag for the force out. But LSU gets a run in the first to take a 1-0 lead over the Purdue Boilermakers. A Purdue error contributed to the LSU run in the first, but the Tigers will take it, and we go to the second inning on what has turned into a very nice day in Baton Rouge. Let's look at how this LSU roster breaks down. Eight freshmen, 10 sophomores, 18 of the players on the roster are underclassmen as sophomores or freshmen, eight juniors and the single senior for the Tigers. The COVID year has contributed to a lot of unbalance all over the country with rosters. Sanceri is the only senior, she's a fifth year senior, the only senior on this LSU roster. There are some that will finish their eligibility, will decide to finish their eligibility because they've, they've already graduated. They could come back, but they're going to go on with their lives. The last year or two, coaches have had to re-recruit their own roster every season. Absolutely. And figure out how to distribute that money again. A lot of Falls behind 0-2. The Purdue catcher will be followed by Alex Echezareta and Olivia McFadden. We play in the top of the second inning. Kilponen in the circle. She struck out a pair in the first. Good call. I didn't think she offered. Kilponen went upstairs trying to get Halata to chase it, but she did not. That's pretty close, but yeah. the benefit of the doubt, I think, properly goes to Halata. And we got slow mode. One two pitch is yanked outside. Yvette Gerard and Lynn Rollins with you. Thank you so much 
for spending some time with us and enjoying college softball. LSU will play a game following this one about 30 minutes after the conclusion of Purdue LSU. Drake is next on the docket for the Tigers. We will have that game for you tonight on the SEC ESPN Network. 3-2 pitch is a cold third strike. That one got the plate just above the knees. Three strikeouts in a row now for Kilponen. See this pitch here, we got a little low, little low. Doesn't matter, only matters what, uh, what they call behind the plate. Etch is Zareta is the designated player. Hitting 333, 8 for 24. And that's up into the net. Sunset Kilponen, excuse me, always has a great disposition in the circle. Either smiling or working fast. I would smile her too after four straight strikeouts. <laughs> Complimenting her defense. Feeling it today. That's a buzzer at the letters and very much a legitimate book strike. We Here's talk, Olivia McFadden. We talk about the fact that uh, she had, Coponen had not had real instruction before Beth Tarina got a hold of her. She was just completely raw. Everything was a screwball posture. In the fall, they took that away from her, and she is turning out to be the ace of the staff now. Savannah Stewart gathers that fly ball to left field. Kilponen has retired five in a row, and the Tigers take a one nothing lead to the bottom of the second. There were not many Kona ice sales yesterday on a very chilly, windy, environment for softball but there's a sale right now and maybe more to come today they could have done a brisk business with hot chocolate last night indeed the sun is bathing the people in the outfield berm but, uh, kona ice may start to get busy now stewart and smith and peterson are scheduled to hit for the tigers We've got a few high school teams here Stewart pokes it foul. Savannah is batting 222. She's making her seventh start. She is four for 18, and half of those hits have been doubles. She has driven in one. Stewart is a junior. We've seen her have some big moments in her LSU career. When she came in as a freshman, she was dynamite. She and Mackenzie Rudite played on the same travel ball team, so. Rudite had a built-in friend when she came here as a freshman. LSU got a run in the first when Briggs reached on an error. Pleasance singled her to third, and Clark drove in Briggs with a ground ball out. This is pulled to the right side and booted again by Jade Moy. She's gonna, the pickup in the throw to second is in plenty of time. She's going to be safe. We got obstruction at first base. I think I saw the delayed dead ball sign for obstruction. And I tell you what, Stewart did exactly like what, oh, they're sending her back. Did exactly what um, you would, you coach your players to do. When she, 
when the defensive player is in the way, run into them, which she will do right here. Moy so right bobbles here. it. First baseman's kind of in her way. They are she sending Stewart back to first. So that is the second error on the second baseman. Yeah, she's having a hard day so far. Moy is taking a deep breath over there and refocusing. Morgan Smith in right field, making her second start. She can do some pitching as well. When you notice the hair, she loves to do hair, including her own. It's a talent. Beth Tarina giving a, a lot of players a chance here to figure out what she has before she gets in the conference play. That's not that far away. Well, once you start playing, it seems to just fly. I mean, this is the Tigers' 14th game already. This is Smith's first at bat this weekend. The 2 1 pitch is fought off into the net, and that levels the count. Purdue and LSU. Purdue is a very large enrollment university, nearly 50,000. Big Ten has some big schools, large enrollment schools. The runner is on the move. The peg down is accurate, but late. Savannah Stewart arrives at second before Halata was able to get the ball there. Took her helmet off. I thought she was going to walk off the bag at first. Opposing base oh. runners have had some success against Halata. She's only thrown out one of 12 this year. She's changing. Uh, she's helmet got pushed up, fixing it. That's foul on the left side. Purdue was founded in 1869 in West Lafayette, Indiana. Major funding for the university came from a gentleman by the name of John Purdue, and his grave is on the main campus. There is a play in the corner in foul ground by Kendall Bailey. She makes a nice catch in the shadow, but an easy tag and advance for Stewart. That's always a choice for the outfielder. Do I catch it, get the out, knowing full well the runner will be moving 60 feet to third base, or do I let it fall? I'm thinking you have to catch that one. You, get, you need some outs here. Stewart was already in scoring position, so you might as well get the out. Here's Sydney Peterson with an RBI opportunity at the bottom of the order. It would be her first of the year. She hasn't had very many chances. Sydney has only had seven at bat. She's had two hits. One of those was a double. Stole third base in her own last night. This is her first chance this year with a runner on third. I know one thing, she's a heck of a second baseman. What else you got about Purdue? 49,639, the enrollment. Big school. It's bigger than LSU. It's Texas A&M big. The 0-2 pitch drops in there for a call third strike. That one baffled Peterson as it just eased its way to the plate. Kind of just freezes you because you're like, is that a strike? Well, Peterson fails to put the ball in play with a runner at third. Now there are two outs, and that was the first strikeout for Panarski. 
Back to the top of the order for Danica Coffey with an 11 game hitting streak. Happens to the Tigers a lot with one out and runners in scoring position, but so much pressure on the, the hitter after with two outs, not getting it done. But if you're the Tigers, right now this is the young lady you want at the plate Absolutely. based on the first 13 games. That's a strike. Great pitch to a slapper running through the box. Coffee has fallen behind 0-2. Stewart is hugging the bag at third. Briggs is on deck. The 0-2 pitch off the mark. One nothing LSU. The Tigers in the bottom of the second are trying to add to it. Two outs, a runner at third. Now it's 2-2. Coffey only has five RBIs, but she's the leading hitter on the Tiger team. She's got 18 base hits. That's two more than Sierra Briggs. Yanked into right field, an RBI single for Coffee. Make it six RBIs. Coffee fell behind two strikes, and then on a 2 2 pitch, she turned on it and drove it with authority into right field on a couple of hops. Tough to keep off the base paths right now, Danica Coffee. So her hitting streak is now 12 consecutive games as she delivers a two out RBI single to right field. Not just a tapper, slapper. She can drive the ball through the holes. So that through the three, four hole. Both runs for LSU are unearned. And I'm thinking Beth Serena's gonna send her. Briggs tries to cross up the infield with a bunt, but pushes it foul. Spinner Bates scored the first run of the game when she reached on an error and eventually came home on a Georgia Clark ground out. Taylor Pleasance is on deck. And you've got a catcher who's only thrown out one of 13. Coffee has excellent speed. Let's see if she's away with the pitch. I'm thinking she is. She's not on that pitch. And Briggs kind of got caught in the middle at the plate. She falls behind 0-2. And that's why I'm not the coach anymore. That and you wanted too much money. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Coffee is on the move and she picked a perfect pitch on which to run. That was in the dirt and there was no chance for Halata. And her changeup is so slow. So Coffee is now five for six on the base paths. She is the leading base stealer with that swipe. Coffee in scoring position for Briggs. Two and two on the second year outfielder, Sierra Briggs. It's the great one-two punch for the Tigers in these two. And they're both just sophomores. Briggs hits it on a hop to the left of the shortstop. She makes a good play to get there. Rachel Becker turns it into an out. But LSU reaches the scoreboard with its second unearned run of the game. And we go to the third. Tigers two, Boilermakers nothing. Second for the Tigers over the Boilermakers as we look around Tiger Park. This ballpark is a little bit larger than it absolutely has to be. In other words, it exceeds 
the limits down the line. Seating capacity of 2671. The foul lines are 200 feet from the plate. The power alleys are 210 feet from the plate. And straightaway center field is 220 feet away. Here's Kiara Dillon. She is first pitch swinging against Kilponen. Kilponen has struck out four of the last five batters. She's been very good, throwing a lot of strikes, staying ahead of hitters, and then sitting them down. Dillon is batting 233. This is her 13th start. She's had a double and a home run among her seven hits. Kilponen is 18 of 25 in throwing strikes. 70% will get it done most of the time. She has struck out six of the last seven, or make it five of the last six. You just see that curveball get there. Three of those five strikeouts have been looking. So I've got a little Boilermaker trivia for you, Yvette. Did you ever face the Boilermakers as a coach? Yes. In Florida. Kierson George is first pitch swinging, and Taylor Pleasance retreats a few steps and has it where the dirt meets the grass for out number two. And the official mascot of the Boilermakers, the official mascot. What is it? I know there's a train involved, but I don't know Bingo. what the mascot Okay. It's called the Boilermaker Special, which is a Victorian-era railroad <laughs> locomotive. My, my biggest question is, though, what about the drink? Is it associated with it? Not that I know of. <laughs> well, there maybe. is a character called Purdue Pete that some people think is the official mascot, but the official mascot is actually that, that locomotive. Kendall Bailey at the plate after two quick outs and here in why, the third. Do we know why? Is there a railroad track around it? Is it? Don't know? I do not know. I know in one in this state we have one favorite Boilermaker of all time. And? Drew Brees. Oh, yeah, sure. He will always be the state of Louisiana's favorite Boilermaker. I think you can say that with a lot of uh, certainty. One-two pitch. A little off the mark. I'll tell you this, though. Purdue has produced 25 astronauts. Can you believe that? Including the second American in space and the first man on the moon. Neil Armstrong? Sure. Second man in space. Let's Gus see. Grissom. Okay. But how about that? 25 astronauts coming from That's Purdue. amazing. And the last man on the moon as well. That was Eugene Cernan. I mean, what discipline would they be in to be didn't matter because they would go to NASA. Some to be kind of astronaut. engineering, aeronautics, yeah. I'm not sure. Well, that's what they're named, uh, known for, right? Engineering. Right. Great engineering school. And an astronaut. 3 2 pitch lifted into left field. Coming on quickly is Savannah Stewart. It's a 1 2 3 inning, and it didn't take long for Kilponen to get her team. Back into the dugout. She has retired eight in a row. We move on with LSU leading 2 nothing over the Boilermakers.
The next victory for Beth Torina will be her 425th at LSU and her 552nd overall. She has led LSU to four Women's College World Series appearances, 2012, 15, 16, and 17. 42 wins per season, uh, uh, average in the season. But it's just a fantastic job here in Baton Rouge. Got the Mike Moore Performance Center constructed. Got this ballpark filled during most SEC weekends. And we've got a great crowd today, considering everything, as we say, everything that's going on this weekend. One of those other things is baseball. And the Tigers, after spotting Southern a 2 nothing lead, now lead 9-2. to two. Southern batting in the eighth inning. Taylor Pleasance had a base hit last time. Pleasance hits one high. Tracking, tracking, tracking. You can puck her up and kiss that baby goodbye. And here comes Taylor Pleasance after an abnormally slow start. She is starting to smack the base of the softball. I think she's back. That's her second home run of the season, her second in as many days. Look at that swing. As lost as she looked for about two weekends. That looks like the Taylor Pleasance that we've come to know. So Taylor Pleasance deposits one in the right center field bleachers. The Tigers have scored one run in each of the first three innings. And Georgia Clark, who had an RBI ground first out, comes to the plate. Pleasance hits a leadoff home run in the third inning. In this game, yesterday she hit a leadoff home run in the fifth inning to give LSU its first lead in a game they went on to win. It was just so strange to watch her struggle so mightily in those first two weekends because she is a complete ball player. But it happens. It's a long season. It's not like football where there's only 11, 12 games. I think of all the sports, those who play softball and those who play baseball, and I'm talking about the people on the roster, I think they form a more lasting family than because you're, you're together so many times times during the season 56 games in softball in the regular season the you same number in baseball you spend a lot of time on the bus you spend a lot of time maintaining your own facility and you're not the uh, highly pampered athlete you're the athletes in the dirt Clark draws a base on balls and this brings Sunseri to the plate Designated player, number 27, Shelly. You have long days at the field. I mean, they're going to play two games today, and they probably got here two hours, three hours before game time. Panarski starts with an off-speed pitch. Sanceri takes it for a strike. Shelby walked in the first. Clark has walked following the Pleasance home run here in the third. Can, one ball, one strike. I can promise you in the diamond sports, when they have reunions, it's all about the goofy things that have happened mm -hmm. on bus trips or the dorm or something like that. Not like the, you know, the touchdown pass I caught or the home run I hit. Since you asked me about other Purdue alumni, John Wooden. Didn't know that. You've already mentioned Drew Brees. How about Bob Greasy? Miami quarterback, Len Dawson, 
the Kansas City quarterback, Hank Stram, the Kansas City and New Orleans coach. A bunch of quarterbacks already. Well, that's Breeze and Greasy and Dawson and Stram. They all won Super Bowls. Wow. Probably, probably didn't win the Big Ten when they were playing football. There. Oh. I'm, uh, I'm done. That's it? Well, that's a pretty good bit. I'm still impressed with that 25 alumni from Purdue at yeah, become astronauts. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Oh, there's one more. You like popcorn, right? Absolutely. You've heard of Orville Redenbach. Oh, yeah. A Purdue alum. Okay. The uh, Jeff Bezos of the popcorn world. Yeah. Yeah, that is strange about the astronauts. But maybe it has everything to do with the engineering. Here's Sunseri on the one-two pitch. She hits it high, she hits it deep into the corner, and it's tracked down and foul ground by Kendall Bailey. Nicely done by Kendall Bailey for the out. That ball just kept tailing away, and you're right, Bailey tracked it down for an out. Clark is now at second base. She had a long way to run to catch this ball. You see Clark going back to tag. Bailey yes. makes the, the play running away from the infield, so she had to take two or three steps to gain her equilibrium and come up throwing back to the infield. Clark did a nice job of moving up. She just kind of caught that ball, almost popped out. Here's Newland, who reached on a fielder's choice in the first. Ball one. But you know, it is Mardi Gras weekend and everybody catches something. Well said. Well played. So for this game, it would be throw me something, sister. <laughs> Three runs, three hits for LSU. No runs, one hit for the Boilermakers. A chance for the second baseman. And Jade Moy makes a good play going to her right. So Newland grounds out to the right side. Clark is at third with two outs. And here is Savannah Stewart, who reached on Jade Moy's error in the second inning. I read a funny story this morning about one of the new football assistants and told his wife something about next week with the kids, and she said, they're out of school. And he said, what for? He said, Mardi Gras. Bet the kids love Louisiana already now. <laughs> McFadden picks it up at third and gets Stewart. But Taylor Pleasants on this swing goes down and gets a pitch around her ankles or maybe the knees and drives it into the right center field bleachers. That run gives LSU a 3-0 lead with the fourth inning straight ahead. Tigers three, Boilermakers nothing. LSU with single runs in each of the first three innings. With Yvette Girard, I'm Lynn Rollins. There you see the Yvette Girard clubhouse deck. Five. College World Series appearances, a Hall of Fame softball coaching career, and it's truly been my pleasure to be seated next to you for the last several years here for these SEC ESPN Network softball games in Tiger Park. Well, I'll have none other than you to be my mentor in this next profession in my life. Well, I don't know if that's a profession. Rachel Becker leads it off. Purdue has sent the minimum number of batters to the plate through the first three innings. Coponen has been dynamite. She's throwing strikes. She has retired eight in a row. Becker had a base hit to open the game, but then was thrown out stealing. And since then, Kilponen has struck out one, two, three, four in a row. Got a fly ball to left field, struck out Dillon, got a pop up to the shortstop and a fly ball to left. 
Doolin. It has been a very clean score sheet so far. I'm not, I don't know if she could have caught that ball, but she was very slow to react. Newland, everybody was calling three, which means third base side. Could she now have remember, caught Newland that ball? is not the everyday yeah, catcher. Yeah, I know. I know. But yeah, but she's you get getting the, some chances here. You, got, so. you get to the screen first and then you find it. Find it and then worry about where it is. Change up, which kind of just floated there. But it's tough to get something by Briggs, even when you hit it hard. That was a very well hit ball, but Briggs roamed to her right to make the play. That catch Briggs made last night still is in my mind's eye. Running to her left and laying out with a belly flop Superman flying catch. She's a very complete ball player. Handles the bat so well. It's got great read off the bat of any ball hit in the outfield. Got a good arm. Jade Moy went down on strikes in her first at bat. Kilponen has thrown nine first pitch strikes in 11 tries. Let's go back and look at the catch we were talking about by Briggs. Did she make the ESPN highlights again? Because she should have. The whole infield left its feet, jumping up into the air. You know, we saw so many of those from the Andrews sisters that we just kind of became accustomed to it. So Briggs is going to get us acquainted with that, too, and kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Spoiled. Oh, here we go. Sydney Peterson leaves her feet to catch the liner. That's two well-hit balls by the Boilermakers. I was just about to say, they are seeing the ball a little better. You can't hit the ball any better. Moy got all of that one, but uh, Peterson snagged it for now. First base lead, number 22, Riley Platusik. 10 Boilermakers in a row have been retired by Kilponen. She has faced the minimum number of batters through three and two-thirds innings. No walks, five strikeouts. You know, her defense is having fun playing behind her. She works quick. She's throwing strikes, striking out batters. Platusik struck out last time. And Kilponen has missed, or rather now it's two and one. Good change up for a strike. Nobody on base. LSU three nothing. The count is even at two, at two, two and two. Do that change up on the outside corner then comes back with the hard screwball inside right under her hands. Doing such a better job of placement, location. Pleasance should handle this one, she does. Two line drive outs and a pop up to the shortstop. One, two, three for the Boilermakers again. LSU three, Purdue, nothing. The SEC in the top 25, according to the ESPN.com slash USA softball poll. Alabama up in the runner-up position behind Oklahoma. Florida at number four, Arkansas at number eight, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, Missouri, Auburn, and LSU also in that group. And by the way, Tennessee and Oklahoma are locked up in a good one right now. Yeah, it's uh, four to four, I believe, in the, maybe the sixth inning. <laughs> But nine SEC teams are in the top 25 this week. And of course, Oklahoma and Texas soon to join. I'd say soon. When is it? 2025? A couple of years. But you know, time flies. Maybe sooner. Time flies. Morgan Smith smashes one up the middle with authority to get the fourth inning started. 
That's the third straight inning. The Tigers have put their leadoff batter aboard. I think that that's Morgan Smith's first hit. It is. And it was not a fragile it one. It was not cheap. Second baseman, number one, Sidney Peterson. Peterson struck out last time. Yes or no? Bunt here? I would think so. Peterson gets the ball down, and the sacrifice is successful. You would be correct, sir. Now back to Coffey at the top of the order. She had an RBI single in the second. Danica has hit safely in 12 straight games, as you see the put out on the sacrifice bunt. Coffey one for two. Morgan Smith at second base. Konarski misses with a first pitch changeup. Coffee hitting about 400. Ball two. LSU and Drake will follow this game about 30 minutes. At the conclusion of this one, we will come back with the nightcap right here on the SEC ESPN Network. Coffee tattoos one deep to left field. That's down on the warning track. Morgan Smith scores easily. Coffee puts some caffeine into the lineup as she rounds second and retreats. It's her second double of the season. And Coffee has six base hits in this tournament. That's an espresso. Indeed. How about this for the slapper? Slapping the ball to the fence, scoring the runner at second. Patting her RBI stats now. And the Tigers have been consistent in scoring. They've got one run in each of the first four innings. So That's Coffee with a one out RBI double to the warning track in left field. And here is Briggs, who is 0 for 2 with a run scored. Spinner Bait has an RBI opportunity. Ball one to Briggs. Anything to the outfield will score coffee the way she runs. Briggs is her own triple threat at the plate because she can bunt, she can slap, she can Hit for swing power. with power. And of course she has much better than average speed. Yeah, she can outrun a lot of balls hit on the infield if they bobble it at all. Had some action in the bullpen now for the Boilermakers. Three and one. No runs, one hit, a couple of errors for Purdue. Four runs, five hits, and no errors for LSU. Bullpen activity consists of a double barrel approach, a left-hander and a right-hander. It's a sweet day to be at the ballpark. A full count to Briggs. Who would have thunk it after last night's wind and cold? 
Goodbye. Briggs hits one high. She hits it deep. You can pack her up and kiss that baby goodbye. Her first home run of the year, and she drilled it to deep center field where a fan stood up and made the catch. Kids got power. Sierra Briggs, whammo. A two-run home run, and watch this catch if we can show it to you in center field. As a fan out there, halfway up into the bleachers, right into his hands. Well done, sir. How about those soft hands? How about small in stature but packs a punch? It's like we're going to have a change in the circle. So that smash by Briggs will affect a change in the circle. We will step aside for a moment as the Tigers have erupted for three in the fourth and have a 6 nothing lead over Purdue. Welcome back, everyone. Freshman Kendall Klauchak from Grand Blanc, Michigan, is the new pitcher. Shortstop, number 17. See the line Lewis. score there. She's one and one. The RA's pretty, pretty high. Curve and a change in a tough situation here. Facing Pleasance as her. Whoa, I don't know if the gun was right there. It just said she threw it 79 miles per hour. No, no, I, no, no, no. I, I, I don't think. No, 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 no. Pleasance has singled. Pleasance has homered. She has two hits, and so does Coffee. And for Coffee, still very much a young player. That's her 10th multi RBI game of her career. Pleasance fights one off. Taylor singled in the first, and she hit one into the right center field bleachers in the third. Alexa Panarski went three and a third innings, allowed six runs on six hits. Two of the runs were unearned. She walked two and she struck out one. Georgia Clark is on deck. Tough matchup, but she's got this nice curveball that will. It was on the outside corner. That one was a, a hittable mistake. Pleasance was very patient. She saw that one come into her wheelhouse and delivered that short compact swing and lines it to right for her third base hit of the day. Yeah, all of her curveballs had broken completely off of the plate, tailing away from Pleasance, but that one didn't. Pleasance jumped all over it. So Taylor Pleasance has had a very good weekend after an extremely slow start. He's going to have a real batting average after this, after this game. A strike to Georgia Clark, who has a ground out for an RBI, and a walk, her last at bat. Beth Tarina is going to make a change, I think. Oh, yeah, she's going to. She's going to pinch run Pleasance. KK Madry is the new runner at first base. Your attention, please. A pinch runner now on first base. For that 42 is a special number to KK Madry. Hero growing up, Jackie Robinson. Because of her dad, obviously. Dad told her all about Jackie Robinson and. She's worn that number ever since. That's a number that's been retired from Major League Baseball. Georgia Clark waits, swings and misses. Madry was on the move. She'll have to return. Just like her, I want to say namesake, but that's not right. Numbersake? Sure. <laughs> Just like him. She can fly. Ooh. Clark goes down on strikes, and then the ball got hung up as Halada tried to throw it, or bluff it at least, and it, it was fortunate that it stayed on the infield. So Clark goes down 
swinging, and here is Sanseri, who has walked and fouled out. Blachek is throwing about eight miles faster. Tigers are going to have to catch up to it, but there you go. It's a, a wanted to throw it and checked herself, realized she shouldn't, and kind of got caught. Runner on the move, and the peg is very high. Madry Watch. gets up, but she'll return to second. She can scoot. I wanted to see if she was going to try and steal third. That would have been fun to watch. Had she not slid, look how fast she got up. Pop slide. Sunseri waits with a runner in scoring position. One in the first, one in the second. They were both unearned. A run in the third and three in the fourth. On an RBI double by Coffee and a following two run home run by Briggs, her first of the year. She deposited halfway up the stands in right center. Not a cheap shot. Not at all. There it goes. This ball is headed to orbit. Way up on the hillside. Pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Home run number five for Shelby Sinceri. And that was a liftoff ball. That one might be the longest one we've seen so far, right? That's deep center field, almost over the berm. But again, off the bat, a no doubter. Tigers showing a little power today. What is that three in one game here? It is five home runs for Sinceri to take the team lead. And Shelby Sinceri just punished that softball. She's got 15 driven in now. They get Taylor Pleasant's bat going, Sanceri's bat, the power of those two. Two lead at the two at the top of the lineup. Lineup starting to look good. Let me backtrack. We have a legal pitch. We had something just happen. That two run home run gives Sanceri 14 driven in on the year. She has the lead along with Georgia Clark, who also has 14. Eight nothing Tigers. Five runs in the fourth. On a single by Smith, an RBI double by Coffee, a two run home run from Briggs, a base hit by Pleasance, and a two run home run from Sanceri. Just what the doctor ordered for the Tigers after a rough weekend in Florida. Newland is 0 for 2. Newland swings and tips that one back into the mitt. Two outs. Five runs home for the Tigers. The 2-2 pitch will be next to Newland. It's tight. LSU will carry at least an eight-run lead into the fifth inning. Second 3-2 pitch. Popped up again, twisting out of the reach of everybody on the left side. Yeah. 
The inning continues as Klauchak could not find the plate on the 3-2 pitch. The Tigers have batted around. Stewart is the ninth hitter to come to the plate in the inning. Stewart has reached on an error and scored, and last time grounded to third. Ball one. Ball two. Stewart laughing at herself, tripping over her own feet. There's a strike. Beth Torina trying many different options in the outfield, trying to find that right connect, uh, combination. You know, Stewart would dearly love to get a base hit here so she can stay in the lineup. She lifts it to left field. George is circling under it and makes the grab. But the Tigers get two home runs in the inning. Sierra Briggs with number one. Shelby Sanceri with number two. Five in the fourth for LSU. It's 8 nothing Tigers going to the fifth. The Tigers have scored in their four at bats, one, 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 and five. And we play in the top of the fifth inning. Purdue will need a run in order for this game to be extended. Otherwise, LSU will win it 8 nothing. Raylene Gutierrez has replaced Georgia Clark at first base. So Gutierrez, the first baseman, no other defensive changes for the Tigers that we can tell at this point. And meanwhile, Allie Kilponen keeps rolling along. She has faced the minimum number of batters. There's been one base runner for look Purdue. At, look at that, that was a long inning for her to sit. Came out through the first pitch strike. Very few times has she not thrown a first pitch strike. My gosh, she's only thrown 49 pitches so far. And only three times has she not thrown a first pitch strike. That'll work every day. The only base runner for Purdue was a leadoff single by Rachel Becker. She was later cut down trying to steal. And there have been no base runners since Becker to lead off the game. 11 in a row retired by Kilponen. And that looked like it could have been 12 because that changeup did not miss by much. Kaylee Halata struck out in the second inning. This is only her second at bat. This has been a masterful performance by Kilponen. No walks, five strikeouts. Four of them came in a row between the first and second innings. And at one point, she retired five out of six on strikeouts. Kilponen working on a one-hit shutout. He went. Strikeout number six. That's the first out in the fifth. Kilponen has had as many as 15 strikeouts in a game. That came against the Camels. Remember the Campbell, the Camels, Campbell, mm -hmm. Camels. Sharonda McDonald, who was a GA here. How do you head remember coach. all this stuff? Head coach. Well, because I know her. We Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
There's a knock up the middle, a solid single by Etza Zareta. So the designated player who struck out in the second breaks the string. Of how many? 16? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 batters in a row before Etza Zareta singles here in the fifth. This brings on Olivia McFadden, who flied to left field last time. This is popped up and grabbed by Coffey for the second out. So the Tigers are one out away from an eight nothing victory over Purdue. A two hit shutout in progress for Kilponen. She has faced one batter over the minimum. No walks and six strikeouts. Strike one to Dillon. The opponents just about everything working today. It's Don't forget brutal. at the conclusion of this game, about 30 minutes afterward, the Tigers and Drake will do battle. We hope you'll join us for that right here on the SEC ESPN Network. And during the intermission, tell a friend about it. A 1 1 pitch to Dillon. Pop straight back. Kilponen is a pitch away from a two hit shutout. She has been masterful in this game. With a ton of run support. The count is level at two. The opponent brings it. It's inside. Etches Areta will have a chance to be moving now with two outs and a 3 2 count. We are in the fifth. LSU is leading 8 0. Popped up. Pleasance is calling for it. Pleasance squeezes it. And the LSU Tigers get a two hit shutout with no walks. And six strikeouts from Alec Kilponen and an eruption of five runs in the fourth inning to seal the deal. Never a doubt for Kilponen. She came out firing, stayed ahead, as you said, worked ahead with so many first strikes. And just about all of her pitches were working today. A gem in the circle for Kilponen, home runs for Pleasance and Briggs and Sunseri, and that was plenty as the Tigers win it over Purdue. Don't forget, in about 30 minutes, we'll have the second game. It'll be LSU, it'll be Drake. That wraps it up from Baton Rouge in game one today. For Yvette Gerard, I'm Lynn Rollins. LSU 8, Purdue nothing. That's the final on the SEC ESPN Network. <laughs>